seated. So as we just come this morning, um, just reflecting on what Jesus has done, we get to come into the upper room with our Lord and our Savior, into communion with Him, right? And even though Jesus died and was resurrected, we have Him in our hearts. We carry Him in our hearts because that was the gift that he gave us. And he said he'll never leave us, he'll never forsake us, and he will be with us forever. And so as we just come this morning in that place of reflection of who Jesus is, what he's done, what he's done on Calvary, he laid sin and he laid death behind so that we have eternal life, right? We have the hope for eternal glory. And so this morning as we get to come into communion and as we posture ourselves into the upper room, right, where we get to lay on Jesus' chest, we get to be John for a day, right, where we can lay on his chest. As we are coming up, just let's ponder. Let us look how, how much that actually means to each one of us, right? And lay everything aside. Lay everything aside that's hindering us from coming. So this morning, we get to come to the table, not because we must, but because we may. And in doing, doing so, Right? We're accepting that what had Jesus has done for us. Amen? And we're taking that physical step into the spiritual place together. So we'll come up. If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and your personal Savior, come up. We're going to come up together. We're going to do this together as a church, as a body. Right? in this house as a family and partake together. So we'll grab our elements and you can come back, sit down, and then we'll partake together. So we'll go from back to front. As this song is playing, let it speak to you. Let us be filled with new wine because Jesus is the best wine. Amen. Amen. Let us come up. Pray over these elements that they're symbols of your love and your sacrifice for us. God, that your body and your blood was shed for us. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and he said, take this. This is my body which has been broken for you. Let us partake. And in the same way, he took the cup, gave it to his disciples and he said, this is my blood. And whenever you drink this, this is the new covenant that I have with you. So we do this in remembrance of me. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right, good morning, welcome. Welcome online, welcome in the present. Thank you for the gift of being in the present. I know we're, we're smaller today and we just wanna bless those that are 
you know, out and about and enjoying our summer holidays. So this morning, <laughs> I want to talk about blessings, right? We want to talk about blessings. Uh, blessing others, receiving blessings, to be blessed. God tells us, blessed are those who are poor in spirit, for they shall find. The, and then in Matthew 5, 1 through 12, there's a whole list. And they're called the Beatitudes, and that's the attitudes we need to have, right? I, I laugh, I chuckle when I say they're be attitudes, right? And I do, I love those attitudes we're to be in, right? And today I want to talk about are we counting our blessings? Are we looking at them? Do we even know what that really means? And I'm going to tell you right now, so in preparation of this message, I finished it probably Thursday, I think, Wednesday or Thursday ahead of time, which was great. But then there's something always God does. He's like, can you put into action what you're preaching on? Saturday morning, I woke up, Right, and Don and I had kind of had a thought of a plan we were gonna do, and it did not go the way we were thinking. <laughs> right, it's like I, I had a couple ideas that I wanted to do. She kind of was not in a good place to just do those things, and so we started our day, kind of like, <laughs> right. <laughs> And throughout the day, you know, God massaged us into the right place. But how many of you guys have those, right? Where you just start your day and it's just like, oh my goodness. Right? And then it feels like it's a train wreck. It could go a train wreck more and more and more, right? Yeah. You know, and, and we're, we sometimes forget our blessings. And often when we think of blessings, right, today, because like I said, I want to talk about them, a lot of us think it's riches, right? Some of it's a happy lifestyle. We're blessed we're, when we're happy, right? When things are going amazing, right? What does it actually mean to be blessed? Right? We say bless you, <laughs> right? We say those things, right? What does it mean to be blessed? So in Greek, uh, the word here means makiros, is the good life, right? And so that was the way that they looked at it. But what does it mean, right? Blessing means giving thanks in all circumstances. Right? 1 Thessalonians 5.18, it says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Okay, my day just opened. You opened a day in the wrong door. <laughs> Are we giving thanks in that way? No. We start grumbling and complaining and <clears throat> start it out that way. Quite often, okay, that, maybe that's just me, but, and we do. Are we blessed? When we talk about blessing, church, we're in a, we're in a time of trials and testing. We really are. How many of you guys feel the enemy's pressure? There is a lot of spiritual warfare going on. Amen? Are we blessed in this testing? I know, CFJ, you guys have been doing testing of our faith. God's saying, put it to the test. Are you putting it in the test? Are you blessing through the testing? Are you blessing through the trials? Are you praising through those things? Look, James 1.12 
ESV, it says this, blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. For when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life which God has promised for those who love him. Would you say that's a blessing? Amen. That is an absolute blessing, right? Giving thanks. A blessing. God, I thank you for the trials. How many of us say that? Not too much, do we? We usually get grumbly and whiny because our flesh gets in the way. Right? Are we joyful because of something? Are we joyful when the day goes to pot or it feels like it goes to pot? Not really. I know sometimes I don't, right? The dictionary.com relays blessing this way, divinely or happily favored. Fortunate to have, to do, or to experience something. When we're facing trials and tests, what is that? God is actually testing us. He's refining us. He's defining us, right, as his children, right? The biblical view of it is to be granted special favor by God with jo resulting joy and prosperity, which is fruits. We've been talking a lot about fruits, spiritual fruits, not material fruits. And their Hebrew word for bless is barak, means to bless, to give a blessing, right? Like Genesis 1, 22, it says, God bless them saying, be fruitful and multiply. And God wants us to be a blessing so that we can what? Be blessing other people. James 1.17, every good and perfect gift is from where? Above. Every good and perfect gift. That means trials are a gift too. We may not view them that way, but trials and those things are a gift. Count, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights who does not change like shifting shadows. And we're told this, <laughs> it is blessed to give than to receive. In everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help the weak. Remembering the words of the Lord, Jesus himself said, it is more blessed to give than receive. To give blessings, right? We give blessings, bless you, right? Then to receive blessings. Hmm. See, God gives us amazing gifts. It's our perspective sometimes that we need to change. Correct? Am I, am I out to lunch here? No, I don't think so. But let's look at Psalm 103. If you have your Bibles with you. And I'm going to be comparing between the ESV and NIV here a little bit, just for a second. So when we are blessed, are we thankful and lift up praises? We sang praise this morning. I will praise the Lord, right? Praise everything we do. We will praise, right? With every breath, I give praise. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with the good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. And when we go to verse 2, right? 
when we look at 103, right, Psalm 103 in the ESV, it says, bless the Lord. In the NIV, it says, praise the Lord, O my soul. So those are interchangeable. Praising and blessing and gratitude, there's a difference. That's what makes it. So when you look at verse 2, praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. That's counting your blessings. That is counting your blessings. And that counting our blessings requires a shift in our perspective. How many of you wake up in the morning, thank God for the, lung, the air in your lungs? Right? If you don't, I suggest you do because it's his breath in your lungs. And when we step out of bed, thank you, God, for the step. The, my feet to be able to hit the floor today. Right? I'm not laid out. I'm here. I'm moving. That means you have a plan and a purpose for me, and I need to walk it out. Right? But if we drift towards what the worldview is, right? Comparatively, right? We let all forms of media and all of those things tell us and determine how satisfied we are. Right? With the status quo of our life. And we quickly lose perspective of our blessings. You see, the world is marinated in worry and fear. Right? And that's the enemy's tactic. What does he want to do? He wants to put fear and anxiety on you. Right? That's what it does. But you see, paying attention to what we're grateful for puts us in the positive frame of mind. Right? And focusing on what we're grateful for is a, re a rewarding way to feel happier and more fulfilled. We live in a time where now more than ever, we don't know what tomorrow will bring. We don't know what each day will bring. You see, the creator of the universe holds each one of us in his hand, giving us what we need for each day, right? We sing that in the, the Lord's Prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. Right? What we need for today. With the costs of everything going up and everything, all of the craziness that's happening. Are we blessed for today? Are we worried about tomorrow and next week and the week after? I know sometimes it's, it's easy to get caught into that rut too. So what does it mean to count your blessings? Philippians 4 says this, 4, 7. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. You see, the Bible, this, all the scriptures are definitive reminders of God's blessing. Those are the grateful assurances. You know, you, we hear this classic hymn, count your blessings one by one, right? It's actually not the way it's written out. It's not written scripturally, count your blessings one by one. But verse 2 says, forget not all his benefits, Right? And so there's some practical things that we counting our blessings actually changes how we move. So the first thing we need to do is remember how it changes our day. We need to remember Philippians 4.19 And my God will meet all your needs all all your needs. Say all. All your needs. According to the riches of his glory. Not our glory. In Christ Jesus. See when we. Often. How many of you guys keep a prayer journal? I suggest if you don't. Do it. Not don't do it. But don't. 
please do that. Because when you look back and you see where God answers your prayers, you remember. God, you were here. You were faithful here. God, you were faithful here. God, you were faithful here. Maybe it didn't seem faithful here, but that was what I wanted. But this is what you wanted. And you start seeing these things. And you remember what God has done. Right? Remember, he is close to the broken heart and he hears our prayers. Right? Every answer doesn't look like a blockbuster miracle. Right? It doesn't. Or even a direct answer we prayed for, but he is moving and he's working in our lives every single day. Amen? He is. Every time we breathe, every time we wake, he's moving in our lives. We can hope even in the hard seasons that we've endured. So when you look back, sometimes you forget those hard seasons you've gone through, and then you look back and you go, that was difficult, but God, you were there, and I forgot about it. Right? Because he knows actually what we need. He knows even more what we need. We may think well, this is what we need, but God gives us exactly what we need. Right? And when we pour our hearts completely all to God, the Spirit translates, and God's heart is moved. Amen? Remembering who God is and how he's answered our prayers in the past helps us to change how we view our day. Amen? The second thing we need to do is refocus. It was a pivot on my, my Saturday morning. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, okay, what am I, I got to put this into practice, right, don't be grumpy, but Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says this, don't be anxious about anything, but in every situation by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, uh -huh. Praise. Present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So it changes our mind, because we refocus. Right? I'm not much for reading psychology books, but Psychology Today actually says this. It says, gratitude is perhaps the most important key to finding success and happiness in the modern day. An attitude of gratitude, right? And you know, we're, we're, this world is so full of misinformation, right? And we need discernment more than ever. We get conflicting views of so many things, right? And we don't even know which way is up anymore. And we need discernment in this day and age. We really do. But there's one source of information that's true. And where do you think that is? Our Bible. It's never changed. It never fluctuates. It never changes. Because it's alive and active. And the same passage can move in our lives different ways. Because God's word is alive and it's active and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. And it, has, it can cut in through marrow and bone, right? So it can cut to the very heart of what we're dealing with. Because God wants us to bring change, right? A repentant heart. God, oh, I'm sorry I acted like a bonehead on Saturday morning, right? Being a grumpy person. I am flesh, but I thank you for his grace and his mercy. And I thank you that he shows that what needs to change in my heart, right? so that I can come to know him more. Because he doesn't want anything to hinder us from coming to him. Right? And so we need to refocus. So it's important that we change our focus. <laughs> Paul reminds in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 10, 5, it says we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God and we take captive 
every thought to make it obedient to Christ. Where is the most of the struggle? It's in our mind and how we think. Right? So we take it and make it obedient to Christ. And then we move forward. Ooh, sorry, guys. I didn't even catch that. But we move forward. Right? We move forward. But blessed, Jeremiah 17, 7 and 8. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is him. They will be like a tree planted by the water that seeds out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when the heat comes. Its leaves are always green and it has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to what? Bear fruit. Once again, this scripture comes up in the last three weeks. Right? God's telling us something. And it's okay. And it's necessary to full, feel all of our feelings. To feel them. God's given us feelings to feel. And our emotions. But rather to use them as a guide back to remember and move forward. We can have all the feelings but don't get stuck in them. Amen? Don't get stuck in them. They can propel us towards God who is ready and willing to take us steps to fully live the blessed lives that he's purposed us to do for his glory. His glory. Right? And our faith gives us permission to freely fear, but then remember, refocus and face the future, standing on the solid rock Not the sifting sand. Amen? Not the sifting sand. Or shifting sand, sorry. It sifts sometimes too. But because God's provided it through Christ. Next one we need to do is trust God. This is the season we are in. The in-between season. This is the season where we need to trust the most. And that's what God is asking. Do you trust me even in? Because he tells this, this. Give. And it'll be given to you. So when we give blessings, guess what? Give. And it'll be given to you. When we bless others, it's better to give than to receive, right? Right? We see this all the time when we, when we just serve and we give wholeheartedly. The blessings come back to us, not because we expect them, but because God blesses us back. When we do, I'll say Samaritan acts, what does God do? He blesses us back. He fills our heart to overflowing. And that is a blessing. Right? There's a community of hurting people. There's broken people around you. There's in your workplace. Everywhere around you is somebody who's broken, who needs love, who needs to just be held. That is a blessing to give. And when God, you give that, that's such a blessing. It just, fill, it just floats your boat. It really does. Because a good measure pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured in your lap. For the measure you use would be measured to you. See, moving forward, it takes trust. It takes trust. What did Dave tell us? We need to step. We need to go. Pastor Dave last week told us that we need to abide. We need to step in step with God, right? That takes trust. God, I'm with you. I I'll, I'll take it, right? Somebody that I know said it's like a three-legged race, <laughs> right? You can't run ahead or you're going to trip. You have to go in time, in step moving. And that means trusting the next step, trusting each place in there, right? 
you know, runners, when they're, when they're facing more miles than they've ever run before, so if you have somebody, any marathon runners in here, right? So if you're doing a 5K run, you're, you're pretty accustomed to a 5K run. Then all of a sudden it's like, hey, I'm going to do a 10K, right? And then halfway through a 10K, right, like if you haven't prepared for it, about that seven click mark is like, oh my goodness, there's, there's like three clicks left. And that's where you really have to dig into the pocket, right? That's where your mind wants to shut down. That's where your mind wants to stop what's going on, right? It's like, oh, I don't, am I going to finish this? this? There's a lot of place here, right? Right? That's where their bodies and their minds <laughs> need to go so they can make it to the end goal, right? So that at the end of a hard workout, the race or distance that you've run before, that they kick into something called a runner's high. All of a sudden, everything takes a shift. Boom. Right? Now, all of a sudden, if someone said, well, it wasn't a 10K, it's a 15K run, then you really got to dig in. Right? But it creates perseverance and persistence. And this is the trust that we need to grow into. We talked about that this morning in the, in the, the prayer room. Right? What is testing of our faith? It creates perseverance. It creates pers persistence. It creates the conditioning to trust. And to walk out that faith. It's a divine experience, right? And how do you develop and maintain it? By spending time with the Father. God, I don't know what I'm go why I'm going through this. But you do. And I'm going to walk with you. And I'm going to trust you. And I'm going to talk with you even through my emotions. Because it sucks. It may suck. It may be a great experience. Right? But look at Job. Job's a perfect example. He's, he laid his heart out before God. God, I don't understand this. Right? And then, of course, we go back to Job, and God says, who do you think you are, Job? Right? Where were you when all of these things happened? I still have you. Stay with me. And he trusted God. See, are we blessed when we wake up with the breath in our lungs? Because then we can truly, can truly trust that there's a purpose for us to walk it out. You see, increased trust in God <laughs> changes the trajectory of our lives, of our day and our lives. So remember, refocus, move forward, trust, and, oh man, I'm sorry, I'm way off. And finally, we have hope. John 1, 16, out of his fullness, we have received grace in place of grace already given. Amen. Our hope's not in the things of this world or even other, even in the other people that Jesus commanded us to love. Right? As we love ourselves. Our hope is in Christ Jesus. Right? Who died and saved us from the power of sin and its consequences of death by humbling himself as he died on the cross. That's why we partake in communion, right? And in that moment, he took on what we could never bear. And that's love. Right? That's love. And in fact, Jesus is God's most perfect expression of love for us. It is best, blessed to give than to receive. Right? And in that hope, Christ again will return and there will be no more death. All the wrongs will be made right and sickness and pain healed. And that is the hope 
setting our hearts to the hope that we have in Christ actually changes the trajectory of our day. How many of you guys forget that we have a hope when we're in a grouchy spot? I do. And he puts our sins as far into the sea of forgetfulness. And he wipes them clean because we have that hope. And we don't know what each day will bring. Only God knows. Amen. You see, then the love of Jesus moves through each one of us, every believer that will give and receive love as we make him known on this earth, right? Everything we do, everything we do is to bring honor and glory to God. Amen. And when we let go of our agendas, set fleeting feelings free. All of our feelings, when we set them free, we embrace the freedom that cannot be stripped by any earthly force or person. Because we're free to live, we're free to love, we're free to hope. And that is life in Christ. Amen? That is life in Christ. This morning, I want to bless you guys. And I want to start by this. Because I am so grateful for so many things here in this church. And things that God has been speaking to me of that we often neglect. First and foremost, I want to thank Dave and Joan. They're no longer here. But I want to thank them for just loving and modeling the love of Jesus. Right? And the heart of compassion in this church. And I want to pray a blessing over them as they are in a new season that they are in. We love them so much. If you're over 60, raise your hand. Because what does the world tell us? When you're 65, you retire. And then we get a mindset that we are no good. I want to remind you today, your life's just starting. It just gives you more time. We were told to burn out, not rust them. Right? And I want to ask for forgiveness right now for how we treat our seniors. And I won't even call them seniors anymore. I'm going to call them older adults. Amen? They're not seniors. Because when we put seniors, what do we do? We put them out to pasture. And I've seen that so much lately. That God's given me a new love for an older adult. So God, I do, I just ask for forgiveness for all the biases we put on them. All the biases that others have put on them. God, that I do. I just ask for forgiveness for just throwing them out to the pasture and leaving them there, rejecting them and neglecting them. Because they are not rejected. They are not neglected. They are loved. And there is so much more they have to offer. There is wisdom. That's why they have gray hairs. There's crowns of wisdom around them. And God, they have experienced that we have not experienced things. God, I pray a blessing in their new assignments. I pray a blessing into their new assignments because you're not done. You just have new assignments. Right? If he's given you breath in your lungs, you can speak, you can breathe, you can walk into these things. I 
pray a blessing over our kids. I know I already did that. You know, God is raising a generation of kids who love more than we think they do. And I do, I call them forth. I call forth that love that they have. Right? COVID tried to take them out and separate them and create confusion. But what they did is when they came back, they actually learned to gather differently. So God, I do, I just pray over these kids that they love better, they love more, and that they have a hunger for you. I pray that you just bless them. God, I pray for this house. I pray that you just bless this house that you've built and you're building and you continue to build. Thank you for each and every one of our teams. I am so grateful for them. Our Lighthouse Ministry, our coordinators, past and present. God, I just pray that you just bless them, the teams and the helpers, for just loving our community. God, I just thank you for our board. I pray that you bless them, that Bless them with more kingdom-mindedness, even more so, right? That we make total kingdom-minded decisions and steward what you've given us. God, I just pray that you bless our children and our youth leaders. RG, Dawn, all the leaders, those helpers there, right? And the kids for pitching in for when needed. I thank you. I just pray a blessing over you guys. All our small group leaders, right? Those of you that are leading small groups, I pray a blessing over you, right? Building community and family inside and outside our church. I pray for a blessing over our worship team past and present, right, for leading us in the move of the Holy Spirit and encountering his presence. I pray a blessing from the past and the future. I thank you for your servanthood. I also, I just want to thank you guys for hospitality teams, those of you that are in the back cleaning and doing dishes and opening the doors, shaking hands and, right, making bags for those that are coming into the church that are new, right? And just helping. And our set up and our tear down teams every every week there's a challenge of setting up tear down and generally at the end of the service we tear down everybody tears down and pitches in I want to thank you guys I pray a blessing over each one of you and I want to pray a blessing over each one of you in this house and those of you that aren't in the house today not even here. You guys are awesome. You really are. And I am blessed that you guys are my family, that this is our family. I am blessed beyond measure. And I am grateful for each and every one of you because you're awesome. You really are. And I thank you for our leadership, our eldership team that's moving forward. I pray a blessing as we move into that place as well. You guys are awesome. And those of you guys that are pitching in already. I want to pray a prayer to count our blessings every day. God, I just thank you. I thank you that you consistently and constantly show your compassionate love for us. 
in the way that you provide what we need for each day. Thank you for comforting us when we're overwhelmed by whatever the world is showing us this day. God, I just ask for healing of our anxiety to help us wade through the worry, or the worry, yeah, the worry, and to just find your truth in love. And God, in Psalms 23, you remind us, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures, and he leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. You guide me along the right path for your name's sake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. God, just strike the fear and worry from our lives when it wells up. Father, help us to remember to refocus, move forward, trust you, and hold on to your hope in Jesus. God, let this song be praise and worship to you. In Psalm 100, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs, because know that you are good, Lord, that you made us, and we are yours, and we are your people, the sheep of his pasture. He says, enter, you tell us this, enter your gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. To give you thanks and to praise his name. Because God, you are good and your love endures forever. And your faithfulness continues through all generations. I just pray that in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. As we close, let us just marinate in the gratitude and the gratefulness that we are blessed and we are highly favored. God tells us we are highly favored. Let us just soak in his presence. Amen. God bless. Why don't you stand with us? This is a song we haven't done here before, but it's called Holy Forever. thousand generations falling down and worship sing the song of ages to the land and all have gone before us and all who will believe will sing the song of ages to the land your name is the highest your
Your name stands above 